All right, welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell Podcast. Casey Campbell here with you, of course, and we are pleased to be joined by Vince Welsh of Fox Sports, of course, who uh, the play-by-play voice of the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, and you can occasionally see him on Pit Road on Fox, and you can see him also covering some college basketball as well. Hey, Vince, how are you, man? Great, Casey. Good to be with you, man. So let's talk about this Truck Series season so far. Um, you know, I just talked to Ben Rhodes and Rich Lucius together. Um, and by the way, those that, that duo is a very interesting pair. But what a start for Thor Sport! They got off. They ought, they got off to a really good start at Toyota with Toyota back with them this year. What's it been like to watch that team just grow? Well, I think that was a, an interesting question at the beginning of the season: is whether there was going to be any uh, transition period for them uh, being back with Toyota. Of course, they'd been with Toyota before, but anytime you change manufacturers, I think there's potential for. Uh, a little bit of a gap uh, in uh, regards to communication or just a transition period in general. And um, I I think Thor Sports, certainly with Rhodes winning the first two races of the season, shows there certainly has not been any sort of uh, detriment to that transition, however it may have uh, unfolded. But uh, certainly I think it's great for, um, for Toyota. I saw David Wilson on the grid uh, from TRD the other day uh, down in Daytona, and, and he was so happy to have Thor Sport back in the fold. And, and obviously, I, I think Thor Sport really is confident with the support that they get from Toyota that it's going to be a successful season for them as an organization. And they're certainly off to a good start with two wins and two races. Yeah, of course, you got other, you know, we got, of course, KBM's kind of rolling up there too. And we all know the truck race at Vegas, I think uh, uh, Kyle Bush is going to be in there. So, yeah. You know, when you look at Toyota, like Thor Sport and KBM, then you also have Atori and, of course, BMR as well. How do you think that those kinds of teams kind of stand out from, you know, the GMSs, the Nieces, and then, of course, with the Ford teams? Well, I think uh, certainly I I would lean toward the uh, Toyota and Chevrolet teams having an advantage um, in, in numbers, for one, but certainly in quality of Uh, And that's taking nothing away from what David Gilliland is doing on the Ford side. But I just think from the lineup of drivers uh, that um, that uh, the Toyota camp has and and what GMS has, certainly um, you have to give a little bit of an advantage uh, to those two manufacturers. But um, I I think what Kyle Busch has done with John Hunter Nemechek is going to pay big dividends. I think Nemechek is going to win multiple races this season. Um, I, I like the, um, the, you know, the young drivers that they've assembled, assembled over there, not just on the full-time basis, but some of the guys that are going to be sprinkled in uh, with them during the course of the campaign. I'm a big believer in, in Austin Hill and Scott Zipadelli. I think that um, they've, they've not quite gotten over the hump in regards to being the championship contender that I think that they are capable of being regular season champ last year, but uh, didn't really threaten to win the championship. And, and I think that that's a step they're capable of making. And, and that GMS and Nice lineup, um, super impressive. You know, I think with Nice having Brett Moffitt, you know, it gives them an immediate championship contender. I know Cody Efa and Al Nice over there are really high on Carson Hosovar and, and Ryan Truex, I think, as he continues to get uh, experience and, and consistent experience. Um, he's going to uh, ultimately be up there challenging for wins as well. And, um, you know, I think, you know, what GMS has been able to do is, you know, goes without saying, I mean, they have a legitimate roster of contenders every single week. And, um, you know, I think with Sheldon Creed being the defending champion and you've got Zane Smith, I expect Rafael Assar to be up there contending um, this season. Of course, won a race last year, but uh, move over from KBM. He's done a nice job. I just, I really like the lineup that they have over there. They've got a good variety. And, um, you know, I, you know, we could go, Casey, we could go down the entire um, grid and have an interesting storyline about every single driver in the field. And uh, I think that's what makes the truck series so exciting. And, and that's why people gravitate toward it. You know, you've been, um, for the first time in a long time, you were on site to call both both the truck races you've been on pit road on site as well what's it been like to you know to be back at the racetrack and of course you know it's i know it's been different with covid but how how what's it been like to be out back out there and you know yeah it's it's been awesome um it's so nice to see people in person 
again. And, you know, the crew chiefs and the drivers, they've all been in, in all three series are super accommodating when we're not at the track, if we need to talk to them via phone or text or whatever the case may be. I mean, they've all been super accommodating, um, but there's no replacing that personal uh, contact. And, and there's, frankly, there's no, there's no replacing being at the, you know, when you're at the garage or, or at the track and you're in the garage and you just bump into people that end up getting information, you get valuable information from that you would have never even thought to ask uh, via text or phone call, you know, and, and that's really how some of the great storylines and some of the great stories end up uh, popping up is you just bump Hey, did you hear blah, 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 or, you know, we're really looking forward to this. And next thing you know, you're on to, you're on to something and, and you can't get that spontaneity uh, via text or, or via phone call. So it really has been a difference maker being at the track and, and just the, uh, you know, just the physical contact that we have or the visual contact, if, if you will, uh, we have with the people there. It's a, it's a big difference maker. You know, a lot of people think that calling the race from the studio is vastly different than calling the race in person. And that's not true. Um, and for those that aren't in television, that may be difficult for them to understand. But when I'm calling the race in person at the racetrack, I'm still watching the monitor 99% of the time because I have to be talking about what the people at home are seeing. If the people at home are watching some, watching turn one and two activity, and I'm talking about something that's happening in turn three and four that they're not seeing, uh, I'm not doing my job right. And so calling the race, the actual physical portion of calling the race from the studio is very similar to calling it in the booth. There are a few little differences, a few little benefits of being there live, but for the most part, it's the same. Um, but what you really miss is the feel that you get for actually being at the track and, and the communication with people that um, that just happens spontaneously. Yeah. So I, I think when you look at where I, I know you and Michael have been kind of been in the booth for a long time. Of course, Michael and Phil and Todd have been around the truck series for a long time when you and this is I think it should, this is I think your fifth season calling trucks for Fox. What's it been like to cover this series? Um, you know, I got to be honest that, you know, when, before I started actually covering the series, I had had very little interaction with the truck series. You know, when I was at ESPN for so many years, we didn't do the truck series um, at that time or I was never involved in it. Um, and um, and when I came over to Fox, initially, I was not involved in the truck series either. And then, um, you know, when Steve Burns got sick and they started to have to kind of pull some people from some different positions. And I got an opportunity to spend some time in the in the truck garage. And and of course, there were people in that garage I knew, uh, but I just had never covered that series before. And I immediately fell in love with it. You know, it has a little bit more of a grassroots feel. And um, I love the, you know, the grassroots racing come, you know, the sprints and the midgets and, you know, that kind of background. And um, it had a little bit more of, of, you know, that homegrown feel. And um, I just, you know, I just fell in love with it. And um, it's uh, certainly one of the thrills of my job and the responsibility that I have with the truck series is something that uh, I tr really, truly value and, and appreciate the opportunity to do it appreciate the skills that uh, the teams and the drivers bring to the table. And I love the, uh, you know, the young and the old and the everywhere in between that the series brings as well. So um, it, it's just a, it's a blast for me and I, I love it. Yeah, of course, you know, you're based in, you know, I know you, are, I know you live around the Indianapolis area yep. with, um, with, you know, with teams like, like Thor sport in the, in the Midwest where, you know, they're kind of separated from North Carolina, some of the challenges that they have, you know, getting to the race shop in that, how, and just how incredible has Thor sport been, you know, they've been around since the series has started. They're in Sandusky, Ohio, not in North Carolina. What, what do you think? Well, I think it speaks to the commitment of Duke and Rhonda Thorson first and foremost. And, um, and, you know, it's, it's not easy getting people, to work for their team, frankly, because if you live in North Carolina and, and that's where your family is based and that's where you've always worked within the sport, now all of a sudden you're being asked to take a job and move your family to Sandusky, Ohio. And there's nothing wrong with Sandusky, Ohio, but when your whole family and your base 
is in North Carolina, um, it's harder to get people to come work for your organization. And so they've got to make the most of their hires. They've got to make the most of their uh, teamwork and their commitment. And, um, and the travel logistics, yeah, I mean, it, it certainly creates some logistical issues for them. But I think the biggest challenge they face is just getting personnel to work there and, um, you know, and transport themselves from uh, the Charlotte area to, to Sandusky, Ohio. But make no mistake, they have done a phenomenal job of assembling those kind of people, those quality workers and people. And I think that's a direct reflection on Duke and Rhonda Thorson and the way in which they conduct their business, uh, the way they make you feel like part of the family. And um, as you said, the long, long time uh, members of, of this series, and they've contributed so much in so many ways. And, and I think that, that that success is a direct reflection of, of Duke and Rhonda and their leadership. You know, when you take a look at, you know, with, with the series this year, I think, you know, one of the biggest questions kind of entering, and we kind of touched on it, was John Hunter Nemechek going to KBM? Um, you know, there was a lot of things that's like, you know, cup drivers going, you know, back down to the trucks. And, you know, of course, the trucks here, I mean, a good ride is a good ride. But it looks like that. It looks like, you know, with no practice and no qualifying for most of the season, it's going to be it was it's going to be tougher for a lot of these young kids to really get tracks because they haven't been to them. So it looks like, you know, we may need more. <laughs> Kyle, I think Kyle said we may need more Matt Kraft. Is it, it what does John Hunter bring to the truck series? Because obviously he's been in the in the series for a long time. Well, he's, you know, just 23 years old, but he has a wealth of experience for a guy 23 years old. I mean, he's run, uh, you know, multiple years in the truck series. He's got Xfinity series experience uh, last year, full time in cup. And you just can't, um, you know, you can't put a value on experience, but, and not only does that help him behind the wheel, but, and I know that Kyle really values this. It's, it's a sound and experienced mind and seat that you can give Kyle feedback on where his program is. And that's a real difficult thing to do when you're a, a Raphael Lassard, like Lassard was in last year as a rookie. Now you've got no practice. You're going to these tracks for the first time. Um, and we saw Lassard's performance pick up in the second half of the season. And I think that was just laps and seeing some of those tracks a second time. And with, as you noted, with no practice, uh, that's a big, you know, that's a big, big uh, piece of the pie that you're missing when you don't get an opportunity to get familiar when you're one of these young guys who doesn't have the experience. And I think that's what John Hunter Nemechek gives the team. He gives them experience. He's been around the sport. He's smart. He's, he's uh, a wheel man. And um, you know you're going to get his full effort every single time out. And uh, I think it's a great hire for Kyle. And, you know, these guys have grown up for the most part, every winning, you know, every one of these young guys have grown up winning. And to go into a sport like racing and run at the back of the pack, when you know every week you show up, you have next to zero chance of winning that really wears on you. And uh, that's why I think you see the joy in somebody like Michael McDowell, who, who is in a situation that could be described similar to that. Now he gets his moment in the sun. He gets that, you know, that payoff for all those days where he's run 28th with no chance of winning. And now he wins the Daytona 500. You know, those, those are the moments that are so rewarding because he has labored at the back for so long with no chance. And that just defeats you mentally. And um, I think sometimes, um, you know, you're in a position like John Hunter's where you just got to get somewhere where you can win again and feel that winning sensation and, and build your confidence again that, that you can do it. And um, I don't expect that John Hunter's going to be in the truck series forever. Um, but um, I think he's going to be a real shot in the arm to KBM this season. And, and we're going to see him in victory lane multiple times. Okay, so we're going to Vegas um, in two weeks. What's that going to be like? And, of course, you know, Kyle's going to be in there. There's going to be – I think Connor Daly's going to be in there too. So, well, it's all, it, Anytime Kyle's in the field, it's who can beat Kyle. 
Uh, I mean, and there's no, you know, there's no two ways around it. If Kyle Bush is in the field in the truck series, um, you know, the, the big story is who can beat Kyle or, or can anyone beat him? And if so, who's it going to be? And I think there are certainly contenders to do that, but there's, there's nobody that's going to be favored more than Kyle. Um, but it's also interesting because, you know, I think you've had two kind of wild cards at the beginning of the season with the super speedway and then the road course. And now the season starts, uh, you know, settling out a little bit to the tracks that, you know, the mile and a half and, and um, you know, some of the more standard races, uh, racing uh, facilities that give you a little bit more understanding of where your team is. And that's hard to really get a real gauge on that at the super speedway or the road course. So I think uh, over the course of this next month uh, of races, we're going to see, uh, you know, we're going to see the cream rise to the top and we're going to get a little clearer understanding of where everybody's program is right now. All right. Hey, Vince, thank you so much for spending a few minutes talking some trucks and uh, we're well, excited to see you and Michael Welchirp on the call all season long for Fox. You do a great job, Casey. Thanks for having me on and uh, happy to be uh, happy to be on with you and, and catch up. So uh, take care and uh, we'll talk to you soon.